China is the world's most populated country with a population of more than 1.4 billion people. Roughly 200 million people are still living below the poverty line and earning approximately $1 to $2 per day. And to make things worse, roughly 100 million young Chinese people are totally jobless. But things are about to get even worse. Poorly planned, short-sighted policies that led to rapid growth in the last 40 years have started to bite back. And now corruption is ripe in China. Every sector of the Chinese economy is facing total collapse. The financial system is rotten with 40% non-performing loans. Real estate projects are facing closure due to debt crisis and dying of demand. People are unable to withdraw their deposits from banks and refusing to make mortgage payments. A huge economic crisis is inevitable. But the irony is, instead of focusing on economic well-being, the CCP is hell-bent on going to war with Taiwan and the rest of the Western world. All eyes of the world are upon China. You can imagine what will happen in China and the rest of the world if the CCP decides to invade Taiwan. A few months back, on rumors of economic sanctions by the United States, Chinese and Hong Kong stock exchanges fell by more than 10% in a matter of 36 hours. It is a clear writing on the wall. With its current strategy, China is heading towards an epic disaster that will mark the end of the CCP in China. China seems to face a series of issues, creating a domino effect, having a long-lasting negative impact not only on its economy, but its poor residents as well. Residents of certain areas such as Yining shared that they did not have access to food. They were left hungry and got stuck in dreadful quarantine camps which made their lives miserable. Recently, 400,000 Chinese people came to learn that their bank accounts had been frozen. They came to know about this when they tried to withdraw their money and the access to their funds was denied. The moment people came to know about it, they started to panic. And who would not while attempting to get his or her hard-earned income? They were enraged and instantly wanted to know what happened to their money, which they thought was well secured in their bank accounts. The frozen bank accounts were a result of fraudulent Ponzi-styled schemes. These schemes have been working behind the scenes, and people were not aware of them. Though this has happened with a handful of institutions, however, the Chinese people are now worried about the security of their money in their bank accounts. This all seems so familiar, doesn't it? Looking back at the time when the United States faced similar economic depression in the 1930s, more than 700 banks failed and left people with little or no money at all. Unfortunately, China is now facing the same crisis. People in China held violent protests and demanded their money. Over time, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, worked to censor these kinds of protests. At the same time, the CCP has always ensured that the rest of the world does not know what's happening within the country. One can only hope that things may stop here, but they're progressively getting worse because of the Chinese mortgage crisis. If you've ever been to China, or if you know about the Chinese culture, you must be aware of the fact that properties are a big deal for Chinese people. In other words, ideal presentation of social status in China is all about real estate. Therefore, everyone wants to own property. This is one of the many reasons why real estate prices have been escalating over the past decades, enough that an average resident can no longer afford to buy property in China. It is very much similar to what happened back in 2008, when many people invested in real estate even when construction hadn't even started. They hoped to generate passive income with the extra properties. Most of the people were investing in real estate to build generational wealth. It was said that China's 70% of wealth was stored in real estate alone. When this real estate market collapsed, investment opportunities for Chinese people also fell apart. The Evergrande is one of the prime examples of the present-day financial crisis. Being a property developer having more debt than any other around the globe, the organization seems to be struggling to pay whatever it owes. With every passing day, it's becoming challenging to pay the debt as soon as Chinese stopped paying the mortgages. At present, Evergrande is restructuring the payment plan to facilitate with the debt. This whole situation only contributes to the real estate crisis all over the country, causing the sector to have a dropped value. Earlier, 
People were fine with investing in real estate, even when the contractors did not begin construction. However, they're not accepting this or paying mortgages anymore. Problems have been there in the real estate markets. However, they are worsening due to strict Chinese covert policies. Now, Chinese people are taking action, protesting as victims against the unfinished projects. Thousands of people gathered surrounding the Shenzhen Banking and Insurance in Jian China. They protested against the illegal lending. At the same time, they refused to pay mortgages because of unethical and unfair practices. Though Chinese people need to take their strong stand, withholding the payment of mortgages will contribute to the collapse of the Chinese economy. Looking at the huge debts of China, where no one knows the number of people withholding their mortgage payments, many are there who are fine to pay as soon as developers finish the construction. Until then, they don't feel comfortable in investing money into something that does not exist at all, or which is not ready to be used. These protests did not go well, with the CCP and the government having to order police to be violent against the protesters, including the disabled and the elderly. The CCP is afraid of losing its government over Chinese people, since they're now standing up for themselves and not at all ready to pay mortgages for a non-existing or an unfinished home. The CCP believes that these protests are political in nature and don't have anything to do with the banking sector crisis. But in reality, the numbers pose a different picture. For instance, according to CNBC News, Chinese property sales are dropping 30% which is worse than what happened back in 2008. At that time, the sales dropped by 20% and were enough to cause huge economic destruction. Majority of people believe that this situation is worse than the United States economic collapse in 2008. The financial crisis that happened in 2007 and 2008 left severe strain on American residents. After the 1930s Great Depression, which was caused by an amalgamation of issues producing a domino effect. This included risky investments, lack of financial regulations, excessive borrowing, predating, lending, etc. China is facing a similar situation, which has been aggravated by other economic issues such as strict COVID-19 policies and huge debts. No doubt, China has far lesser debt as compared to the United States, but it continues to experience the economic slump as people are no longer paying their mortgages and international traveling towards the country is low as well. Therefore, the economic slump continues, partly because of the zero COVID policy, but also due to the real estate market collapsing and the decline in the job market. China's job market is about to implode, leading to skyrocketing unemployment rates. Currently, the unemployment for people between the ages of 16 and 24 was shockingly at 19.9%. In July, it broke the record of jobless adults and teens in the country. Many of these people have seen how difficult it's become to find work and support their families. Such high unemployment rates is the story of a downwards trend in the economy. Though there is much happening in China, such as the mortgage crisis, zero COVID policy, slump in the job market, bank freezes, all putting the economy at serious risk, people living abroad are unaware of what's happening inside the country. So the question is, why is that? Why is there such a huge mortgage revolt going around, and yet we have a lot to hear about it? Well, the fact is, is that the CCP has been really hard in censoring news related to all these crises about whatever's happening within the country. The real estate market's down. Residents are not paying mortgages because apartments and homes are not complete. Banks have been frozen due to long-term schemes. And yet we hardly see anything online. Since everything is happening simultaneously, it will create a domino effect, where we can witness the banking system collapse as well as the Chinese economy. However, the CCP does not want anyone to know about all this.